Uh, hi, welcome to Cartoon Academy class. What are we at? 11 now? Um, we're continuing on this course. We've been uh, drawing together in this class for, I don't know, uh, 11 would be five weeks. All right, five weeks we've been working together and we've talked about a lot of stuff. Uh, my basic philosophy comes down to uh, anyone can learn art and everyone should learn art. Everyone should learn something that they can do that's, that's not a video game, that's, uh, you know, whether it's music or it's writing or it's drawing cartoons, everyone benefits from learning something that they can do uh, that's a creative activity. Um, I think that in our world, the divide between artists and non-artists is uh, artificial. I think everyone is creative, and uh, everyone can be creative if they're allowed to be. And so my challenge to you is to allow yourself to be creative. Um, give yourself the space to learn. The worst thing you can do is uh, be overly critical before you have the chance to try something. Um, I think I see a lot of people do this where they say, oh, I'm just not good at that. So they don't try. And the truth is, you know, think about a baby coming into the world. A uh, baby is not good at anything. Um, and the baby doesn't worry about it. The baby just tries stuff. Uh, and a baby uh, learns to walk and talk and eat solid food and every single person who ever did anything great was a baby. So uh, they didn't come into the world. You know, Picasso didn't come into the world uh, painting masterpieces. Mozart didn't come into the world. I mean, he got started pretty early, but he didn't come into the world uh, writing beautiful music. Uh, everyone has to start somewhere. And to the extent that you can give yourself the room to uh, try and fail, uh, and and try again, uh, that is the extent to which you can learn uh, how to do anything you want to do. This guy has a strange body. Um, in this class, we have talked about um, going slowly, uh, taking your time to, to feel the pressure of your pen or pencil on the paper, um, feel how it's moving. When I'm drawing circles with this, this is still a pretty new pen. When I'm drawing circles with this pen, I can kind of feel it has like a, a bit of a stutter. Uh, so when I'm drawing with it, uh, I kind of have to be aware of that. The more I use a, one of these pens, the smoother it'll go. But I need to be paying attention to how the pen moves on paper. Um, and so there's a slowness that you want to consider. And there's also uh, a not worrying about quality you want to consider. Um, and so kind of think of it as going slow and going fast. Take time to work on doing your art slowly um, to get that focus, but also see what happens if you just, you know, crank out a bunch. Um, don't worry about it and realize that uh, art is like going to the gym. Uh, you don't go to the gym and start lifting heavy weights. Uh, you gotta, you gotta do it a lot. You gotta get a lot of uh, work done in order to get good at something. Um, over the past few classes, we've been looking at this model uh, for character design that basically says, I want you to think about uh, when you're drawing, try this basic formula for creating a character. You want to have a big, round belly, a circle for a head, Use curves to create your arms and legs. I tend to think that uh, straight lines make for a little bit more boring and uh, less expressive characters. So just for while you're learning, try and do that. And then hands. For now, we'll just let these hands be like so. Little fists. Feet can be effectively just ovals. 
So this is what we've been building up to, creating these characters that have a bit of uh, three-dimensionality to them. We want to think about when we're drawing these shapes, we want to think about them as spheres, not just plain old circles. And when we are drawing our characters, we want to give them a little bit of a sense of motion, so that, that curve inside the arm, the, the curves inside the legs. Um, and what I want to talk about today is how we build off of this basic frame um, to create our characters more. Last time we talked about using the, the lines on the face to identify where you're going to put the facial features. And, and mind you, I'm doing this in pen. I recommend actually doing it in pencil to start learning. Um, it's just I use pen because I have a lot of experience and uh, pen is more visible on the camera. Um, so we talked a lot about last time about how to add sort of flat features to our characters. Um, this time, what I want to talk about is how to add uh, more three-dimensional uh, costume and accessory elements to your character design. Um, so this is kind of going in the direction of being a, a sort of a Mario. Um, and Mario is one where, you know, if I want to draw those overalls, I can imagine that the straps of his overalls and the buttons of his overalls are kind of flat against his body. So I don't really have to do anything to change uh, how I draw. I'm, I'm mostly trying to, you know, I can use my uh, dimension line here, the curve on the uh, surface of the body, I can use that to, uh, you know, what I'm saying is this curved line is going to echo in the curved lines that I use to define the straps of his overalls. Uh, when something is flat against the body, if we're working on this spherical model that I'm showing you, can basically try to have the curves of the things that are flat go around it. So, for example, uh, with Mario, you might think about the his hairline, and we don't see his hair all that often, but you might think about his hairline as kind of running along the surface of his head, and we kind of shape it based off of the lines we already have in play. But today what we want to talk about is the parts of character design that come off of the surface. So ears, for example, are a great one. Noses uh, are another good example. And... Basically, any accessory we want to do that doesn't just look flat, we're going to think about how it comes off of the body. I was talking about uh, the straps of the overalls before. Um, you could do your overalls just flat like that, or you could add a little bit like this, and all of a sudden, what you'll have is... Let me see if I can just get this real quick. I'll kind of copy it over here. What I'm suggesting is that if I was drawing this and you weren't seeing all the underwork, you'd see... Mario kind of looking like this, where those straps come off the fundamental dot, 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 circle of his body, if that makes sense. Um, similarly, you could have the pants come out past the edge, uh, just to give a little bit more of a sense of uh, this isn't just the shape on the body, uh, we're actually imagining now that the, the, the sh his shirt material is sort of sitting underneath his uh, pants material. Uh, similarly, uh, now we start to think about how we would build, uh, right now this Mario-ish guy looks like he just has hands that continue. Uh, so what you always see with Mario is actually that he's kind of wearing gloves and they look like that. And when you're drawing that, it's going to actually come out being more like this. Uh, so you want to always be thinking about the structure that's underneath what you're drawing. You know, I'm not showing you the actual connection that would be the shape of his body underneath that. Um, but all of a sudden, we can start to build things out. You know, if I have his uh, legs here, oh, blue. Get away from the electric plug. My dog is here. He is kicking my light switch. Okay, sorry about that. So you could think about pants being that same way too. 
uh, once we have our basic leg shape, then we could build, I'll call these cuffs, and I'll call this the shape of the pants. You know, it might come up like that. Similarly down here, come out like so. And now what we're doing is each step along the way, we're kind of building up our character. Come over here to this arm and do another sleeve. Uh, you might do uh, for Mario. I always loved uh, Super Mario World where he had a cape. And you might do something like put his little cape coming around the front. And, you know, all of this that I'm drawing in pen, you could draw in pencil and then just erase uh, all the underlining work. But this is fundamentally how you would structure it. It's just that I'm drawing in a way where I can't now erase it. Um, here's the rest of his cape coming out behind him. Uh, let's see, what else does he need? Uh, a little bit of hair. He's got a little bit of a uh, mullet Mario situation going on. And then for like the hat, we would want to imagine that the actual crest of the hat would fit around his head like this so that you could draw, if you know that that's where the hat connects to his head, then you could draw the shape of his hat coming out before you even worry about the brim, which then you could draw like so. I know this is hard to see. What you wind up with is something that basically looks like, let's see if I can do a quick translation. Uh, Head coming over here to ear, sideburn coming down. And looking at it all this way, knowing that you're kind of building it from your most basic shape. You know, it all starts with that sphere. Um, but if you can build that all up uh, and then take away the lines, I, I don't have that privilege, but if you're working with a pencil, you certainly do. Um, and uh, the more you do that, then over over time, you can kind of use those skills that you gain with pencil to do what I'm doing, which is honestly just making it up off the cuff as I go. Um, okay, uh, I'll draw his little, uh, if we were coming down, it looked like that. And I can now look over at what I drew for the cape in the other drawing and pop over here to go like so. Okay, so that's basically what I, what I want to get at is uh, when you are, let's do a, I'm making him Rario for, for me, for Ray, Cartoon Ray. Um, that's basically what we're doing. We're building out our characters. Um, you know, same way that you can draw a circle to start building your Sonic the Hedgehog. Actually, let's do a full body Sonic the Hedgehog, all right? And then, how do I want to? I'll do, I'll do running Sonic the Hedgehog. Okay, so I want to go arm coming back here, arm going out there, leg coming out, leg going back. Oops, sorry, get back in the center. Okay, so I just did this little mock-up for Sonic the Hedgehog. Again, no curves, I mean, no straight lines when I'm drawing these arms and legs. And last time I said you could use the first line as sort of the center skeleton. In this case, I'm using it uh, as one side of the... Uh, leg or arm itself. Uh, similarly, it can start by, it's all a matter of starting simple and building the complexity. So here I'm starting with the most simple version of the shapes that I can. Come over here to, I'll raise up a little bit so I can see more. Uh, start like so, and start like so. Give him a little neck, although for the most part we don't really see Sonic's neck, but that's okay. And Sonic 
is one where uh, he has that uh, sort of mouth area that's a little bit out from the actual shape of his head. So you might build it out there, uh, come back down around like so. And come back. One, two, about three is usually what relates to his head and then come back down like that and now it's more like just shaping things out the buckles on his shoe or, or the stripes that come over his shoe you can just draw them like that or you can have them kind of come up and over um, you know you can just do the bottoms of his shoes as lines or you can kind of build them out so that they feel a little bit like a uh, rubber sole around the whole thing uh, same thing over here uh, you can just do the lines or you can pop it out a little bit and have it feel rounder. Um, I know this is probably somewhat obvious to a number of you, but not to everyone. Um, and and this, this kind of uh, basic stuff can, can really help to just hear it verbalized. A lot of this is stuff that you accumulate knowledge-wise, but it's important to, uh, to think about it too. Um, it's funny, he's, very, he's a very round hedgehog. Um, this depiction of Sonic. Uh, if I want to build this out, I might say that's going to be his thumb and I'll put his fingers there, this back side, just add the knuckles, pun not intended, and figure out where the little sleeves are going to be. Same thing down here with his foot. I guess I was going to say foot sleeves. I believe the correct word would be sock there. Um, you start to be able to see that uh, for a Sonic the Hedgehog, the basic name of the game is the same thing as Sonic, where you get one roll around the edge of the hand like that. Or alternately, you could uh, say you're seeing the, the arm go behind the hand, and then you wind up with something like this. Uh, meanwhile, uh, it's a nice comparison to look down at a Sonic the Hedgehog foot where it's a slightly bigger uh, sleeve or sock uh, where you kind of do a double donut almost to get that sock shape. And what I am coming back to again and again is that I want you to think about the the shape of the structure beneath this. You really are imagining that the arm continues down to the hand and the leg continues to the foot uh, just so that you can have structure in your drawing um, and make it somewhat believable. Um, other accessories. Let's see. Um, you're going to need to be able to draw somebody holding something. Um, so when I want somebody to hold something, I start with the thumb and the pinky and then whatever it is, let's call it a, uh, this is going to be a ukulele's neck. You want to be able to imagine the hand being a complete shape, like so. So that when you draw it, right, you imagine this line continuing through. You can... Man, I want to see the Sonic the Hedgehog and Super Mario Band play together. How come we haven't had like a Sonic the Hedgehog rock band game? Had every other kind of activity those those Nintendo and Sega characters do. Okay, bring it down like that. Uh, and all of a sudden, when you have this, you know I'm not I'm not going to draw a gun or anything. Uh, but you know, oftentimes, uh, you know that's 
what these action characters might hold, a laser gun, a sword. Um, a sword's not a bad one. A sword's a pretty good weapon. Uh, sword, similarly, you can draw. You could start with, you know, the bottom of the hilt so that then when you're drawing it, you get to go finger, thumb, finger, finger, and come out to the guard and up like so. I guess that's more of a dagger than a sword. Uh, I showed you how to draw the straps of the overalls. Uh, similarly, you could um, you actually just do those same straps as, let's go, uh, arm, arm, and then we're gonna go Bring it around like that, like that, neck, coming around like so, up to a hand, right, that's the basic uh, fin from Adventure Time backpack look I think really you might want to right I drew that strap off there you might want to continue it there just to kind of have it come around on that side and you know I talk a lot about the underlying frame of your characters but I don't actually draw them all that much um, but they're in my mind. I'm always thinking about, you know, what is the what is the curve of every part of the body? I know that I want this arm to feel like it has dimension anytime anytime I draw an arm, I don't want it to feel flat. I want it to feel like uh it has curvature all the way around it so that if I decide to put on a watch that watch will feel like it's on a curvature too. This is stuff that isn't necessarily going to be drawn, but it is happening in my head. Um, I want to know those realities so that, you know, I even want to know that the, the hand is curved so that if I'm going to draw a ring, uh, it doesn't just appear to be flat. Um, generally, to my opinion, uh, of course, straight lines are super important. Um, but when you're drawing cartoons, I think any chance you can have to add a curve uh, is a good thing. I think you should always uh, attempt to curve something uh, because it's actually pretty rare uh, to see something with a straight line, um, to see a straight on line anyway. I mean, at least uh, that's sort of where perspective comes in, uh, too. Uh, obviously, if you see something man-made, it's going to have straight lines to it. But even then, you might want to be thinking about how something looks uh, from a certain angle as opposed to just directly head on. Um, okay. Um, what about an anteater? <laughs> hey, Tracy Michael Steele. Hi. That's my subscriber, guys. I actually... Here, you want to see... Uh, Let's take a quick break. Tracy is one of my subscribers, and subscribers get uh, individual drawings. I've been working on it, Tracy. Uh, here you go. Here are the two first attempts I have, uh, but I haven't done one that I'm super satisfied with, but I'm working on it for you. Tracy is the only subscriber for whom I have not completed their drawing yet. Um, every subscriber gets a, an individual drawing. I message you and request it. Um, but this is aside the point. Uh, the main thing... Uh, Thanks for being here. Um, oh, Beatrice is here too. Ah, I love it. Hi. Hey, guys. You, the little tune signal is an indication that they're my subscribers. Uh, you will know if you won the giveaway on Saturday. I'm getting so blindsided right now. Um, okay. Uh, in conclusion. Um, whoa. Oh, it just dropped down to 100 people for a second. That was wild. Um, okay. Actually, I do want to say one more thing. So I'm going to go to the full half hour here. All right. So... This is what we've been doing, right? We have this 
central body that we've been working on. You got your curves for your legs. Um, and we're going to get into building out the body a bit more next week. Uh, but what I want you to start thinking about uh, in preparation for next week's classes is um, we have got our basic body, but you know and I know that you know people aren't actually just round. And so what we're going to start to do is actually add another layer layer to the torso, more or less the rib cage above the big belly. Um, and also another thing is shoulders. Um, I think you're all ready for it, uh, my dear cartooning friends. Um, this is what's coming down the road. Uh, this one next step is super crucial um, and gets us making characters who maybe feel a little bit more real. Uh, this is definitely... Uh, the, the legs don't look like they're going to support the body. Uh, but this is what's coming down the road. Um, as always, I'm assigning homework. Uh, if you don't know, uh, this is the 11th class, and that means there this will be the 11th homework assignment. Um, and every... Uh, there's no such thing as late homework. You can always turn it in, and anyone who does 75% of the homework for this class is going to get a uh, certificate that says they completed the class. Um, not a particularly meaningful uh, certificate, but a certificate nonetheless. Um, and the homework for this class, this time, is I want to see another original cartoon character that you make up. I want to see it drawn with full body, and I want to see it have uh, some features that come off the surface. So if it's got a watch, I don't want to just see a strip. I want to see uh, the, the watch that goes out and beyond. If you want to draw it and not erase your work, it's okay for you to turn in something that looks like that. Um, but I want to see you start to building some of these features uh, into your characters. Um, give accessories. Um, Costumes, accessories, um, details, etc. All right, that's the homework for this class. Brand new character, all your 75% uh, is going to be like 18 assignments because we're going for 24 sessions. That's the crazy thing uh, is that this class is only halfway done and I'm already exhausted. Um, but we're going to go through the summer because uh, that's what I said I'd do. And I tend to do things that I say I'm going to do. Uh, 